In this video, it's all about low level weather. What is happening, M0 Nation? Jason Shepard here. I hope you're having an amazing day. You'll especially be having an amazing day if you win uh, the foamy aircraft that we are giving away for the year of 23 Mike Zulu. Links in the description down below or over at m0acontest.com. This is the last week to get signed up. Be doing a big live stream uh, giving that away as well and just really looking forward uh, to uh, seeing our winner fly. I'm a really, really bad RC pilot. Maybe someone can help me one day. Anyways, our topic here today is low level weather. We spend so much time talking about turbulence and thunderstorms, but I wanna talk today about what happens down low. Um, question for you, maybe you can leave me a comment down below. Who has, show of hands, ever given a pilot report? I, I would imagine it's, it's Probably not more than 50% of us here. Maybe because you watch M Zero Way, you, you've done it because you're a good pod who's always learning. But you know, it really comes down to having the right information and pilot reports are such an amazing source of information. It allows us to, to have that knowledge and just gain a deeper understanding of the weather and what that weather is actually doing. Because you see, knowledge isn't power, knowledge is just potential power. I need to understand low level weather in a sense that, do I know uh, the four main types of fog and why are they created? Do I understand the potential of how weather can deteriorate? I was just doing an interview not too long ago and sharing how um, a classic example, it's 7 p.m. at night, um, I'm flying to an airport and the temperature dew point spread is only two degrees. And right now the METAR says clear but I got an hour to my flight and you all are starting to think, oh, and that may not be clear when I get there, but that's the level of knowledge um, I need you to have and understand. You see, we must learn to make these smart go and no-go decisions as needed or have the humility to turn back uh, if, there's, if there's weather ahead. So I believe there's really kind of four main ways when we're looking at uh, low-level weather. And the first thing we need to do is just like an intervention in a way. When's the last time you got a complete weather briefing? I'm talking from start to finish, for call to briefer. Who's ever heard those magic words, VFR flight not recommended? That kind of cuts you sometimes. You're like, there's, there's no way I'm going. That guy or that gal, they're pretty smart, and they told me that. If you've never heard that, it's because you probably never called a briefer before. And I'm not dating myself by any means. Like, this is still an amazing service. I know we do it all electronically now. And, and speaking of that, there's many amazing electronic tools. Um, have you ever used the uh, GFA tool? Uh, it's from AIM 7-1-4. That's our graphical forecast for aviation tool. Amazing way, like as technology advances, just to continue to give us that knowledge. But again, I can give you and, and help you understand this weather information. Um, but if you can't make good decisions based on your skills, on your aircraft capability, or your operating environment, it kind of all falls in vain. Switching topics just slightly, but still related to low-level weather, um, think, I, I think a lot about things like CFIT. Um, we did that Kobe Bryant accident analysis. It was a while ago now, but you think of this controlled flight into terrain. What is the definition of controlled flight into terrain? Perfectly good airplane, flown into terrain. Nothing's wrong with the airplane. 17% of GA accidents, by the way, are related somehow to CFIT. And CFIT, we think of mountains. CFIT could be uh, into water as well, or obstacles. It's just an inadequate awareness on the part of the pilot of the impending collision. So how do we avoid things like CFIT in these low level conditions? Um, Autopilot can help, right? It allows the pilot to focus more on situational awareness, but go into CFIT and another uh, topic that doesn't get a lot of talking is like wire strike avoidance. You know, back when we had uh, the PTS, it was considered an entire special emphasis area, but that even that got overlooked. Um, but you've gotta be thinking at altitudes of a thousand feet or less, um, and if we, we went and looked at the data of when an airplane, or this is prevalent with helicopters too, 
wire strikes have a 30% fatality rate. Um, 60%, by the way, when operating in or near instrument conditions. And you look at this, by the way, most of those accidents are experienced pilots. Not just experienced pilots, but experienced pilots familiar with the area and, and, and the wires that are there and, and still hit them. Um, you've got to think, when, when we're in these low visibility conditions, uh, wires are not always visible at certain angles. They're also subject to illusion. So what can we be doing to increase situational awareness? And again, I, I would be amiss if I didn't share this. A rule of thumb, and I learned this when I was flying helicopters, you always cross wires at the poles, right? That's going to be the highest point over them because you don't see them when they dip down between those poles sometimes. Um, another uh, operational pitfall, and I hope you've never fallen into this category. Humbly, I can't say that. I have fallen in this category early on in my flight training, just making dumb mistakes, um, is the topic of scud running. Uh, what is scud running? I mean, the pilot, you're trying to maintain visual contact with terrain, but you do it at a very low altitude, and there's probably instrument conditions like right here. Again, I think back to Kobe Bryant. Uh, the pilot requested uh, flight following at a very low altitude in fog conditions. What do you do in this case? Ask for a special VFR. Uh, honestly, just get on the ground if it's, if it's possible. You know, you've got to use all available resources in that airplane. You've got to know how to program your GPS correctly, your, your EFB, and not let it become a distraction where you're just like all this head down time trying to, to figure it out and know its capabilities. I just feel, and maybe I'm on my soapbox a little bit and I apologize, but I feel like we're these, sometimes these children of the magenta line, like direct enter, enter, follow the magenta line. Right? We've got to move so far beyond that knowing how to use our ADSB weather, knowing its difference between XM weather, knowing its difference if you have onboard uh, weather radar or uh, FIS, flight information services as well. And I apologize that this came off as a bit of a, of a rant. That wasn't my intention here. Um, the goal is always, and before we film every video, is to save just one life. You know, low level weather is nothing to mess around with. We have to know not only how to avoid it, how to operate in it as an instrument pilot, what are our personal minimums, and just like, when to say no? When are the ingredients coming, right? The close temperature dew point, all these things we're mentioning here as well. It's a passionate topic of mine, and maybe you have the humility to share a story where you made a mistake with some low-level weather, or you found yourself scud running when you never intended to. I didn't wake up that day on my, it was a private pilot cross country, I said, I think I'm gonna scud run my entire private pilot cross country. It wasn't my intention, but I felt pressure to get this cross country done. My check ride was coming up. The airplane had tough availability issues. I just felt all this pressure that I created in the flight training environment of all places. It's just not necessary. We have to know when to say no. I'll end by saying it again. Knowledge isn't power. Knowledge is potential power. You've got so much knowledge at your fingertips with this flight briefing, but if you can't utilize it to make smart go and no go decisions or understand it, it's all really in vain. Can't wait to read your comments down below this video. Thanks for the likes, thanks for the subscribes. Don't forget to win that foamy aircraft, m0acontest.com or links in the description as well. Have a blessed, abundant, outstanding rest of your day. And most importantly, remember, the good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, everybody. I'll see you.